Hello, welcome to UH Studio Design Academy. My name is Dimitar, and in this video, we'll look at the 10 features of Rhino 6 that are worth knowing about, especially if you're a designer or an architect. I've been using Rhino 6 for the last few months on a daily basis in the office, and I've been reading quite a bit about the new features of Rhino 6 in both Rhino's website and their forums, and I've been trying all of them out. And these 10 tips and tricks that I'm sharing they've quite changed the way that we use Rhino in the office and they have significantly improved our workflow. So I'm very happy to share this with you. So let's get started with number one, Arctic display style. This is a viewport display style which we can reach from the top left hand corner menu. And it essentially gives a very nice hidden line render with some ambient shadows and the settings could be adjusted so you have a high resolution. You can turn line styles, line edges on or off. And it's really simple and beautiful display style for diagrams. In many instances, we used to use V-Ray to display exactly these kinds of types of diagrams. And the process would take, you know, five minutes to actually render an, an image and then save it. There's no more need for that. We can do it directly from Rhino's viewport and get a pretty instantaneous, very good looking diagram without the need to actually go into an external rendering engine. Along with the display style, let's go to feature number two, which is view and capture file resolution option. So if you type view capture to file, view capture to clipboard, we get this window now. Within it, you can see there's different presets for resolution, which can be further overwritten or scaled up depending on the resolution that we would like to get. This is quite significant because it allows us to export really high quality diagrams with the Arctic display style. Okay, so feature number three is native PDF and SVG exporters. Here's a simple file with solid catches that we're gonna output as a PDF. And this is in Rhino 5, so I'm going to output it using the Microsoft, the, the Windows 10 PDF viewer. So I'm opening the file now in Affinity Designer. And if you notice at the edges, they're all polylines. And if you notice at the hatches, they're all fragments of different elements of the file as opposed to being a solid hatch. So now looking at the same file in Rhino 6, opening it and exporting it with the new native Rhino 6 PDF output. This is the file that we get in Affinity Designer. As you can see, all the corners are smooth. They're actual splines. And all the solid elements, all the solid hatches, they become singular elements within our vector program. And as you can see also in the layer display style, this is significant improvement because now instead of having so many little fragments that we're not sure which is what, we now have only the shapes that are actually solid showing. And because of these optimizations, the PDF size has shrunken significantly. And now that all the PDF commands are native to Rhino's API, it's possible to quickly create a batch script to export all the layouts as PDFs, which wasn't possible with Rhino 5. The next important feature is quads and angons mesh support within Rhino 6. So for an example, let's take this object and export it via OBJ to a mesh-based program. In this case, we export it into Blender. And as you can see in Blender, it comes in with angons and the only difference we need to do is still clean it up slightly just because of the difference between how meshes and, and nerves basically work. Now let's try the opposite. This is some context, Washington DC, from OSM in Blender, which we import into Rhino 6. And as you can see in Rhino 6, it displays a Zen Gons, which is quite nice. It reduces the visual clutter of having all the triangulated faces working with contexts. Now here's the same context in Rhino 5, which is triangulated. But we can also bring it into Rhino 6. Opening the same file in Rhino 6, there's a command that quadrangulates all the meshes. And then there's also another command, which is called add ngons to mesh. And it converts all the triangulated meshes into ngons. The next feature is isolating selection. Finally, in Rhino, we can select a couple of objects and type isolate 
and we only see them without worrying about which layer those objects are on. This is a much needed feature that has already been quite well implemented in Revit, Blender and probably many other programs that you guys may be using. So it's very nice to see it now also in Rhino. This next feature I find particularly exciting, Arctic mode with Grasshopper objects. So basically now if we do a custom preview within Grasshopper, we don't even need to bake the geometry to view it properly. So here's an example. All this geometry is still within Grasshopper, it hasn't been baked. But if I display it in Arctic mode with a custom preview, we get all the nice shadows, all the ambient occlusion effects that we get with baked objects. This is really nice because it means that essentially our files are going to shrink in size since we need to bake much less geometry. The next feature is adding thickness to surfaces. This is a particularly useful feature which I used to actually do by importing geometry from Rhino into Blender all the time because sometimes you are dealing with complex geometry that takes significant amount of power and effort to add some thickness. Now in Rhino there's an option near in the properties tab which allows you with a simple click of a button to add thickness. Now it's also important to say that we only see this thickness in the rendered views which is the arctic and the ray traced views. In a similar manner if we deal with curves there's an option that can pipe them with any sort of radius and precision that we want. Sub objects menu this is a new option within the filter selection where you can choose to select either points or surfaces or poly surfaces and it's all the way at the end and it's called sub objects. Essentially what it allows us to do is let's say we have a couple of objects that are grouped before we couldn't edit those objects. We could get them out of the group or into the group but not move them within the group. Now with sub objects select even though it's a group we can move different objects within it into different positions. It also works for poly surfaces, we can select faces that make, or rather surfaces that make the different areas of the poly surface. And the last feature I want to talk about is the Cycles rendering engine. Now this is Blender's default rendering engine, and Blender is an open source mesh modeling program which I use quite often. As you can see with the results, I'm just browsing here some examples of renderings done with Blender. They're pretty much on par with industry standards. And in terms of materiality, in terms of what Rhino offers, it has most of the features, but not yet all the features that Cycles offers within Blender. But it's an excellent start. And I'm highly excited to see how it develops further to incorporate more of the Cycles features found within Blender. Thank you for watching these quick tips. And do you have any other new features in Rhino 6 that you find quite useful to your workflow? If you do, I'll be happy to hear what they are in the comments below. And remember to subscribe to my channel, from now on I'll be covering a lot more Rhino tips in addition to the Blender tips and tricks that I cover. Cheers and happy modeling!